Today, I'll be presenting a basic conceptual understanding of what blockchain is. To use the analogy from the name, blockchain can be understood as just a chain of blocks that contain data or information. Visually, you might imagine a blockchain as something like this. Again, it's just blocks of information connected in some way to each other. And it's a very good way to store a chain of information. So what? But storing information is simple. I can do it on a notepad, a computer document. What makes blockchain special? Well, the fact that it is a chain makes it more secure. I'll explain in more detail in a sec. First, let's continue on with the analogy of blocks and chains. Just like with a regular chain, when you tamper with a node, all the other nodes are no longer linked to each other. In a blockchain, when someone messes with a node, the blockchain is no longer valid. So what exactly are these chains? The chains are hash algorithms. Each block has its own unique hash, and every block has data, and that data always includes a crucial piece of information the hash code of the previous block. So how does blockchain work like a chain? Say a hacker tampers with a block, called block A, which is in the middle of the chain. This means the hacker changes the data stored in block A. When that data is changed, it causes block A's hash value to change. This means that block B, which is the block that follows block A, no longer has a hash code that refers correctly to block A. So in order to keep the blockchain a chain, the hacker must also fix the hash code that refer to block A and block B, so that it corresponds correctly to block A's new hash code. However, the fact that you change block A's hash code reference in block B means the hash code of block B will no longer be the same. This means that block C, which follows block B, will no longer have the correct reference to block B. Now you must also change block B's hash code reference in block C. Let me show you this visually. As you can see, there are five blocks in this blockchain. Each block has its own individual hash code. The bigger text is its hash code, and the smaller text below it is the hash code reference to the previous block. So for example, in the second block, its hash code is 68, 6A7, and it contains the hash code of its previous block, 4E9. Okay, so we say someone tries to tamper with the third block. Since the data inside the third block has changed, it now has a new hash code. It has changed from 905 to 911. But as you can see here, the fourth block no longer refers correctly to the third block. It contains 905 as the reference to the, to the third block, but that is no longer correct. So now the hacker must also change this reference. So now, the reference is changed correctly to 911, which refers correctly to the third block. However, the fact that this data is changed causes the fourth block to have a whole new hash code, 3H6. Now as you can see, the fifth block no longer references the fourth block correctly, and so the chain breaks. And we now fix it again, and fix the chain. However, as you can see here, in order to change data in the third block, the third, fourth, and fifth blocks were also changed. It's not too hard for a modern computer to recalculate the hash functions. I'll just simply fix the chains. Sure you can, but blockchain has a system called proof of work. It takes a modern computer about 10 minutes to provide proof of work. And to use the analogy again, you need to fix the chains and rebuild the blocks. Essentially, new blocks need to be created in order to change data in a block. To rebuild the blocks, you need to provide proofs of work for all of them. So imagine a blockchain with 100 blocks, and you tamper with the 50th one, for example. Then you'll need to change data in the following 50 blocks after the block that you changed, which would take 50 times 10, a total of 500 minutes. Okay, still, that's not too hard. If I have a lot of money and buy a bunch of supercomputers, to calculate the proofs of work for me, I can still easily change data in a blockchain. 
This is where blockchain's distributed network comes in. Blockchain is built on a peer-to-peer -peer network. So everyone has a copy of the entire blockchain. For example, if someone manages to change data in a block on their blockchain, fix the chains and rebuild the block. As you can see here, this hacker has managed to rebuild the blocks in her own blockchain. Now she tries to broadcast it. All the other nodes on the entire network realizes that this is different from their own blockchain. And so they reject this blockchain. Blockchains are only valid when there is a cons consensus among all the nodes and blocks that have been tampered with. Even if the tapper manages to fix all the chains and rebuild all the blocks, it will be rejected by other nodes since there is a discrepancy between the tamper chain and everyone else's chain. Okay, so you're still determined to tamper with blocks. Here's a checklist. First, you have to fix all the chains, which is just calculate all the new hash codes. Then you gotta rebuild the blocks, provide the proof of works. And you also have to take over at least 50% of all the nodes. In addition, even if you do manage to take over 50% of all the nodes, you'll need to provide proof of works to change all the blocks in the blockchains of each and every node. As you can see, it's almost impossible to change information stored on this blockchain. And that's why they're so awesome.